Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hearts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you want to take notes and get ready for today's message. So we are in a series called Back to the Basics. We're studying the basics of Christianity and some doctrine of Christianity. If you are a first-time guest today, if you are very new to the Christian faith, this sermon really isn't for you, but that's okay. Uh, I don't want to freak you out by this topic, but it's a freak-out kind of topic, all right? It's a freak-out kind of topic. Today, we are going to talk about angels, demons, and the devil, okay? It's one of those weird style sermons, but here's my promise to you. This is what I'm going to do to you today. Are you ready? As a, as a, uh, I can't even say as a kid. I still love doing this. If I see a hornet's nest, I have to throw a rock at it. Anybody else in here? A few of you? Yeah. If I see a hornet's nest, I have to throw a rock at it. It's just, I love doing it. I love watching it bust and then run away as fast as I can and screaming. Ah! Uh, a few years ago, I threw a big rock at a white-tailed hornet's nest. I got stung three times, was sick for two days. It was awesome. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do to you today. I'm going to throw a rock at this nest, and I'm going to run away. Okay? I'm going to just bust this thing open. I'm going to leave you with so many questions, and I'm not going to answer them because I just can't. I literally can't. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to create more questions than I'm going to give you answers. And I hope that's all right because we're all theologians. If you've ever read your Bible, you are a theologian. And theologians study out their faith. If you just believe what I say, because I said it, because you came to my church, you're naive. You're naive. Do not believe what I say. Go look this up for yourself. Let it bear witness with your spirit. You owe it to your eternity to know what you believe, not what Pastor Mike believes. Not what I preach, not what anybody preaches, not what someone preaches because they're on TV, all right? I've learned some crazy stuff about some of the beliefs of some other churches, and it's just wild, all right? So the study of angels, demons, and the devil, and I was going to start with angels to give their right place, but I think I'd rather start on a good no uh, leave on a good note, and let's just start on a bad note. Is that all right? Let's talk about demons, demons, demonology. If we're ever going to study demonology, we want to figure out information about demons, we must answer the biggest question. Where did demons come from? Where did demons come from? Because one must believe that if God is good and God is perfect, that God did not create demons. Okay? God did not create demons. God created something. That was good and perfect. And through sin and mutation, demons somehow came about. Today, I am not going to tell you a definitive way that they came about, but I will give you three theological beliefs, three theological stances as to where demons came from, okay? The first one is this, and it's probably what most of us believe that demons are the one-third of the fallen angels that fell with Lucifer. If you've been taught that before, give me some love. Show me. One-third angels. Okay. Here's a crazy fact. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say it. The Bible doesn't say. There's no scripture that says, and the one-third of angels that fell with Lucifer, they are the demons that roam the earth today. It's not there. It's not there. It's wild. It's confusing. Here's, here's why I'm doing a series like this, okay? Are you ready? I went to seminary in 1999. My kids informed me that that's the 1900s, Dad. <laughs> I was in the seminary in 1999, into the year 2000, and I got so angry at the Bible and the church 
because for the first time I actually began to read it and study it for myself, and things that we said were scriptures were not scriptures. And beliefs that we had, I could not substantiate them in, in scripture. And one of them is like this belief right here, that demons came from the one-third of angels that fell with Lucifer. Now, let's read the verse. Let's read the only verse in the Bible that alludes to angels even falling with Lucifer. Are you ready? In Revelation 12, 4, it tells us this. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Now, let's be honest, that's a little cryptic. That doesn't say, that doesn't plainly say that when he fell, he took one-third of angels with him, right? The scripture literally calls them stars, the stars of heaven. So, in theological study, we have to go back and say, what was this in reference to? What were the light? What was the stars of heaven? And we believe it to be one-third of the angels fell with Lucifer. But then there's a verse in the Bible. If we believe that they fell and that they are roaming and that they are the demons... Then there's a verse in the Bible that could contradict that belief. It's a verse that probably none of you have studied or looked at. Then are you ready? 2 Peter 2.4 says this. For if God did not spare the angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment. So where does it say these angels are? In hell, in chains, in gloomy darkness until when? The day of judgment, which has not occurred yet. There's another verse in the book of Jude that alludes to the exact same thing. Now, to be fair, to be fair, there technically were two groups of angels that fell. There was one third of the angels that fell with Lucifer, and then there was a group of angels, the sons of God, that took the daughters of man and mated with them and created offspring called the Nephilim or giants. It's the people that were destroyed during Noah's flood. This could be in reference to them because if you read down through this passage in 2 Peter, it compares these angels to the situation that happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. And Sodom and Gomorrah would be sexual sin, therefore it kind of equates that they would be those. But it gives us question. It gives us question. Are the demons, the angels that fell, when we don't have scripture to back it? There's this theology statement called solo scriptura, that we believe in scripture alone. But the problem with only believing scripture alone is that it doesn't allow us to equate for history, context of the time, and other writings in that era. Just because the Bible doesn't explicitly give us information doesn't mean that God's trying to hide information from us. Do you understand that? It just means it's not there. It is not clear, it is not fully clear that one-third of the angels that fell are demons today. That's belief number one. Belief number two. Belief number two is that demons today are disembodied human spirits of a pre-Adamic race. That there could have been a people on the earth before Adam and Eve. This would equate in science for cavemen. The Ice Age. Okay, this is called the Gap Theory. The gap theory says that between Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and Genesis 1-2, and the earth was void and darkness fell upon the face of the deep, there could have been millions of years. That God created the earth perfect in its fullness with humanity, and sin fell, Lucifer fell, corrupted the nations that were here, God destroyed it by taking away the sun creating an ice age, killed everything on earth. This is the gap theory. The gap theory says that those people that were here, the cavemen, their spirits are what we know to be the demons today. It's really hard to prove that. I've actually tried for the last 20 years to get people on team pre-Adamic race, 
And it's very, very, very difficult to study this out and to believe it. Um, there's a chronological Bible that puts the Bible in story order, which is pretty cool. Um, I grabbed this belief from something that I learned in 1997 in a Bible school that I was in. Um, uh, the, the class was called God's Plan for the Ages, and it was written by Jimmy Swagger, and it was this theological study of dispensations of time, okay? Um, I like this study. I think it's cool, but guess what? It doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if there were people on the earth before Adam and Eve. It doesn't. This is just a cool study to look at this. Then there's a third, and this is the one that intrigues me the most. It's the one that I began to study the most, is that demons are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, the giants who perished at the time of Noah's flood. These would be the offspring of those angels that came down and the females that mated with them. They had babies and they produced giants. This, this would mean that the babies were part celestial being and part human being. It would mean that they had some power, that they, they were giants. And for this reason, this is why God destroyed the earth with a flood. Now, like I said in all of this, there's not biblical proof of this. But I did find a really cool writing called the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch is a uh, scripture-based style writings found in what's called the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was not chosen to be canonized and put into the Bible, but it was written around the same time and has the same style of writing. Enoch is the guy in the Bible that the Bible says that God loved him so much that he took him. Okay? Now watch this in Enoch chapter 15, verse 8 through 12. And before you think that I am no longer a Bible-based person and I'm reading heresy, I'm not, okay? I'm telling you, this is not the Bible. This is not what we believe to be the inspired Word of God. I'm using this as a historical writing that talks about this belief, okay? And now the giants who were produced from the spirits or angels and flesh, human being, shall be called evil spirits upon the earth, and on earth shall be their dwelling. Evil spirits have proceeded from their bodies because they are born from men and from the holy watchers, angels, in their beginning. So by men it means humanity for females, and then the uh, masculine would be the angel body. They shall be evil spirits on earth, and evil spirits shall they be called. Now, that's kind of clearly written as to what that would be. But again, as a Bible-based, Bible-believing church, we do not have biblical proof. I could more lean towards this last one. It's easier to believe that a demon today is not just a human spirit, but it could be part celestial and part human that why it could move around and, and, and live, let's say, on earth. Whereas we know a human spirit throughout Scripture either went to hell or heaven. It went to Abraham's bosom, and the rich man cried out, tell my family, give me a, dip your finger in water. Like there was these conversations that were happening that doesn't say that they could roam freely on the earth. If we believed that it was merely human spirits, we would then have to believe in ghosts, right? Because for a human spirit to not be in its body and move around on earth, it would simply be a ghost. Um, so, like I said, I'm throwing a rock at a hornet's nest. Just tell us what to believe. I will not. I will not. This is what happened to me as a child. This is the, that's the way I was raised. We are going to believe this. This is, what we, this is what the Bible says. And then I was raised and said, no, it doesn't say that. Do you know where the belief that the one-third of the angels that fell with Satan are the demons? 
That did not come from the Bible. It came from an English poetic writer, John Milton, when he wrote a book called Paradise Lost. That's, that's where the actual beliefs stem from. John Milton, poetic writer, called Paradise Lost. It's not a bad book. It's a good book. I've read it. But it didn't come from the Bible. All right? So let's do ourselves a favor and begin to study truths out for ourselves. Here's another reason why, and I was thinking about this at breakfast, why I won't just give you an answer. Because we have a problem in society today. We have a problem in society. If you disagree with me, then you can no longer worship here. Not me saying it, you saying it. I don't agree with what he says. I can't go back to that church. Right? Come on. This is how we are. I think, I believe, I can worship with people that I don't agree with. I think we could have great debates about Scripture, and I get animated just like this. And then we sit down and have lunch and have a good time, give a high five. Like, yo, that was awesome. Right? So I'm not going to give you this doctrinal fact of something that the Bible does not clearly say. There will be things that are non-negotiables. There will be things that we're going to say, hey, no, this is what the Bible says. We're going to get into that in the next couple weeks. When we talk about Christ, Jesus Christ and who he is, we're going to get there. But for now, we're not. Let's talk about the devil. Who is the devil? We know who he is. We know that his name was Lucifer. Lucifer. Morning Star. You've seen the show, right, on TV? Lucifer Morning Star, anyway. He was created by God. He was created by God in perfection. He was perfect. And then he chose to sin. He chose another way. I want to confront one belief. Lucifer was not the angel in charge of worship in heaven. He was not. Nowhere does it say that he conducted a band of angels, and one was on a banjo, and one was on the bass drum, and it doesn't say that, okay? There's this whole belief about why worship pastors don't last in churches. They always rise up and try to take the church, and to that I say, get behind me, Pastor Chris. <laughs> no, me and Pastor Chris have a great relationship, but this is one, this is one of those things that he wasn't. The truth is he was so beautiful, he was so majestic, that as he moved and as he walked, it was melodic. It was melodic as he moved, and it was so attractive and beautiful, and that ended up being part of his fall, it was because he was so greatly beautiful. And I want to tell you, your boy's busted today, all right? He, he might have been pretty at one time, but he's busted today. He ain't got no teeth. He got his teeth knocked out. He'd been defeated. He walking around kind of stubby. Okay? We know that he was an angel. He was created by God. He was the most beautiful creation. And I don't want to take a ton of time and talk about him today because I don't feel the need to ever give him any glory. But we must know this, that he does not want you to be good. He does not want you to be prosperous. He does not want you to be healthy. The dude is miserable, and misery loves company, right? He wants to make as many people as miserable as he is. But you got to know this. The devil is limited in his power and what he can do on earth. He is limited. Listen, the devil is not omniscient and omnipotent. Okay? He is not all-knowing, and he is not in all places at all times. Listen, the devil does not know what you're thinking. Stop believing he does. Stop giving him this power that he doesn't have. He does not have any power over you except for the power that you give him. He doesn't have it. The Bible tells us in James 4, 7 that the devil himself can be successfully defeated. He says, submit yourself therefore unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee. This is an automatic equation. I don't have to do both. The moment I submit to God, I resist the devil. 
I don't have to submit and resist. Submit and resist. I'm not stiff arming the devil. Get what I'm saying? The moment I submit, it is resisting. But if, is it, if, but if it is an equation, then it also works in reverse. The moment I resist God and what he's saying, I'm submitting to the devil. This, this, is, this is when we believe he wins. It's not because he's all powerful. It's because we give up sometimes. And we give in sometimes. I used to do this demonstration when I was a youth pastor. I'd bring the smallest teenager up on stage. And I'd say to them, I'd tell that teenager, dude, punch me in the face as hard as you can. Seriously, go ahead. Go for it. And they'd rear back and they'd go to punch me and I'd grab them by the head. <laughs> and I'd squeeze their head and I would move them around. And I'd say, can this kid in any way defeat me? No. He cannot. Then I'd lay down on the floor, and I'd say, okay, go ahead, kick me. And every single one of those little bratty kids would kick me so hard. <laughs> That's the only way the devil can impact and affect your life, is by laying down and letting him kick you. Satan and his demons do not know your future, but they're not stupid. They can put two and two together. They can do math, right? They can look at the decisions that you've been making. They can look at the results that you've been getting, and they can infer by that equation what you're going to do next. But they don't know. They don't know what you're thinking. They don't know what you're planning. Come on, somebody. We give the devil too much credit. Although the devil may be able to observe what we do on a daily basis, and draw from those conclusions. The devil cannot know your future, nor make you do anything as a child of God. Hmm. Which means we blame a whole lot on the devil that is just really us. The devil did not make you eat that second piece of chocolate cake last night. As much as you might think he is the tempter of the brethren, and he did, he did not. You did not become demon-possessed and go eat another bowl of cereal. <laughs> All right? Your flesh craved the appetite of the flesh. So what about angels? Angels. I like talking about angels. Makes me feel good. Makes me feel a little powerful talking about angels. Angels are created by God. They're created in the spirit realm. They have moral judgment and high intellect, but they do not have a physical body. You cannot take a plane into the heavenlies and see a bunch of angels walking around. You can't, okay? They are God's warriors. They're a group of people referred to as the host of heaven or the army of heaven. They have not always existed but they are part of God's universal creation. Ezra tells us this in Nehemiah 9, 6. He says, you have made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their host. With all their host. You made the host. So God made the angels. He created them. And since angels are spirits, which we learn in Hebrews 1, 14, they do not have a physical body. They do not have flesh and bone. Therefore, we cannot ordinarily see angels unless the Lord opens our eyes to see them. Check this out. This is pretty cool. This is where stuff gets weird, okay? This, this, this is like the stuff that does attract me because it is kind of weird and like spiritual. In 2 Kings six seventeen, then Elisha prayed and said, O oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. This is where we get that song, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It kind of comes from this song. Feel like I'm defeated, but God opened his eyes, and he saw the army of heaven in their chariots of fire surround them, ready to defeat this army that was before Elijah. That's so cool. But an angel can also take on human form. The Bible says, beware that you may entertain angels unaware. 
Now, just because everyone loves those weird, spooky stories, I'm going to give you one. All right? Back in the late 80s, early 90s, my dad was building Christian Faith Fellowship in downtown Middletown. We had an office space um, next to the Greens building there on North Street. And my dad was going through a time where he was just like really wondering if maybe he made a mistake, maybe he wasn't supposed to do church, maybe he wasn't supposed to be in Middletown. He was going to give up and walk away. I can make more money, provide for my family, back in the secular world, maybe I just miss God. And there's a knock on the door of his office, and this gentleman walks in, my dad says, finely dressed. Now you know if an angel going to go talk to my dad, he better be dressed right. Don't walk up to my dad like no bum and then think you're going to be an angel. Like my dad, listen, (laughs) my dad washes his car in penny loafers, okay? Like (laughs) most of y'all don't even know what penny loafers are. (laughs) Finely dressed, hair combed just right, white hair, deep resounding voice, sat down, talked with my dad, encouraged him, said, Joe, you're doing a great job proud of you. Keep on going. The Lord is with you. Build him up. My dad was like fired up. Yeah. Guy shakes his hand, walks out the door. My dad's like, man, I didn't get this guy's name and phone number. I'd like to keep in contact with him. He said, not, not as soon as the door closed did he grab the handle and open up and the guy was gone. And there was a hallway very long that way and a hallway very long that way. He could not have closed it and sprinted down the hallway fast enough to get away from when my dad opened the door. My dad said it had to have been an angel came at the right time to encourage me, to build me up. Now listen, if that seems too far-fetched and you're like, I don't believe it, don't. That don't I don't care. Like, it's fine. <laughs> right? Don't say, I can't go to that church because he's told a dumb story about an angel. <laughs> Wasn't Pastor Chris great? Wasn't Pastor, let, let's, let's build Pastor Chris up. Hey. Come to church for Chris, not me. Satan. (laughs) Listen. It don't really matter. Right? That's what I'm saying. Like, this is a really cool topic, but it's not doctrine. It's just a cool topic. Where demons came from is cool, but it don't really matter. It ain't going to depend whether you go to heaven or not. All right? Listen, I'm trying to say to you, whether you've ever seen an angel or not, doesn't matter. Whether you've heard a voice from heaven or not, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. But I encourage you to know what you do believe. Search the scriptures. Find your heart. So normally angels perform ordinary angel duties. But we do believe in a lot of our lives that we have a guardian angel. Who loves to believe they have a guardian angel? All right? One of the main texts, and I'm sure there's more, but one of the main texts that we get this belief from is Psalm 9111, where David says to us, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Okay, a guardian angel to guard you in all your ways. And and here's what I'm going to say. If you believe in a guardian angel, and if you believe that he guards you in all your ways, how about you get out his way? How about you get out of his way and let him do his job, right? Let him do his job. Stop being stupid, right? Stop undoing what he's trying to do. Stop ditching him and hiding from him, right? If you believe you have a guardian angel, then empower him. Put him in his proper place. Let him give you the way of escape so that you're not tempted beyond what you can bear, as the Bible says. Let him do his job, right? Let him bring to your knowledge things that are happening. Angels demonstrate moral judgment. In 2 Peter, if they sinned, they chose that. They have moral judgment. They have high intellect, and they worship God by singing praises to him. Angels do have great power because they're referred to as mighty ones in Psalm 103.20. Great and mighty in power. But here's what I love. God actually loves us more than he does angels. You see, when angels sinned, he cast them to hell, locked them in chains and put them in darkness. 
when we sinned, Adam, humanity sinned, he killed an animal and clothed our nakedness. And when that wasn't enough, he sent his son to die on a cross who did go into hell and made a spectacle of Satan openly and rose victorious and gave us the keys of death, hell, and the grave and empowered us. God did that for us. We may be entertaining angels today in our worship service as we're singing songs of glory and worship. But here's a danger. There was a guy a few years ago, I'm not going to mention his name, but he talked about that his angel Emma talked to him and led him and did all these things. We need to be very careful. We need to be very careful. Because John in his revelation of heaven and of Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, it says in Revelation 19.10 that he entertained an angel and this angel was beautiful and powerful and John bowed down and began to worship him and the angel said, hey bro. He didn't say bro, but he said, hey, don't do that. Don't do that. No, 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 no. Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brother who holds to the testimony of Jesus, the angel said. We're not called to worship angels. We're worship, called to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Him alone had a big, big debate. I was, in, I was in one of my online classes this week. Had huge debates this week, so much so that the teacher at the end of the class said, well, that was a very difficult class. Thanks, Mike. The discussion this week was about the Trinity, about the Godhead about modalism and tritheism and Trinitarianism and all these things. Big debate. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to throw this out there, right? Big, big debate about this. And I mean, they're just telling people, like, if you don't believe what I believe, you're going to hell the whole night. I said, listen, it doesn't really matter what you believe about the Trinity. It doesn't really matter what you believe about the Godhead. As long as Jesus Christ is in his proper place. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is God. He is God. He is not just a son of God like we are. We are a son of God. He is not a son of God. He is God. He is God. He must be in that proper place. And listen, it doesn't matter what you really believe about demons and angels and all that kind of stuff. I hope you know this. God is good and the devil's bad. That, 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 if you don't get any more theologically deep than that, just know that. All good and perfect gifts come from above. Anything that's evil and destructive and deathly, it comes from the devil. God does not give you sickness and disease to teach you a lesson. The devil does not try to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus has come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. God is good, the devil is bad. Jesus must have his proper place. And this would be a great time for me to segue into a salvation call, but I'm not. Not today. Today, I'm leaving you hanging. I'm leaving you hanging on the precipice of this faith. What is it that scripture is saying to you? Please do not be another generation of naive Christians who just swallow something that someone preaches. If I said something today that was biblically incorrect, I ask you to chew on the meat and spit out the bones. Consume what you can, throw away what you can't. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you, guide you, lead you. If studies like today pique your interest and you want to know more, listen, I'm telling you right now, then join our college. By having a demand on studying, it makes you grow spiritually at an exponential rate that you will never read your Bible enough to get there. You just won't. Pastor Mike, is all of this just a ploy to get people to sign up for college? No. I'm tired of watching Christians be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge. Let's get educated in Scripture. Don't just believe someone from TV. Don't just believe me. Study out Scripture. Lord, I pray that you would open the eyes of our understanding throughout this week. Enlighten us to your truth. Show us things to come. Lord, you know my heart. If I preach something today
that was not scripturally sound or not your will, then I repent in front of everybody. God, you know, I am on a journey just like everyone else to discover the mysteries of your covenant, the secrets of our relationship. So Lord, as we grow, as we learn more about you, as we understand you in the context of how scripture was written and how it applies today, I ask you that you reveal yourself to us in a new and living way. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Let us be excited about the faith that we have. I thank you, Lord, as we leave today, we're protected and safe. Everything we set our hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. Love ya. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to familychurchny.com or email us at team at to get started today.